Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Amaris and this is Sprucing Up Mayhem. I'm back in the car today because I am going to be full on working on my bathroom makeover today. And I have one or two more things that I really am hoping to get. One of those being a new stool. And then I'm going to look for another bath mat. So I'm going to go into Home Goods and to Hobby Lobby to hopefully find the two things that I'm looking for. And then we will get back to the house and start working on this project. You might see the before shots of this bathroom and wonder why we're doing a makeover today. <laughs> but this bathroom has been a huge work in progress since we moved in. We've added new flooring, we've put the beadboard up and the wood wall. This bathroom has been painted all different kinds of colors and I'm just ready for a new fresh slate. There are a few problem areas in this bathroom like this pole that collects all kinds of dust and just general projects I've done have just worn out. So the paint is chipped and it's not looking fresh and nice anymore. And I especially hate this soap tray. So I am going to work on getting this bathroom cleaned out. I've been thinking long and hard on how to give this bathroom a, an impactful makeover on a budget. So that is what I plan to do today. So the next thing that I want to tackle is the soap tray that is on the wall in the shower. I have wanted to remove this for a very long time. I talked to a plumber not too long ago and he said that chances are it could go one of two ways. Either it's just a regular wall back there and you take the soap tray off and clean the wall behind it or it is covering some sort of hole that by taking it off may expose whatever is underneath this tub surround. So I am pretty much just taking a chance here because it has been slowly falling off of the wall for a while now. Um, all of the caulking that's around it is deteriorating and molding, it just collects mold. And for a while I thought that the black stuff that was surrounding it was mold. I tried cleaning it and it turns out that it is adhesive of some kind. So. Hopefully I can get this thing off of the wall without damaging it and I can get all of this adhesive off of the wall. If I can't, then we're just going to have an ugly spot in the shower for a while <laughs> and we're going to take the after pictures with the curtain draped just so, so that no one can actually see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to get this off for you. I may include this footage. I might not include this footage depending on how it goes. We shall see. So this is amazing. I am so happy that I was brave enough to try this. And I will advise that, again, I totally took a risk tearing this thing off my wall because the plumber did tell me that 
it could have been covering a hole. And so in this case, there was no hole. <laughs> Thank God there's a little bit of adhesive left that I need to scrape off, but it is scraping off slowly but surely. So I'm so happy that I was able to do that project because the tub feels bigger and cleaner without it. I wanted to show you how I collected all of the things that I took out of the bathroom that I was reusing and put them all together with the few things that I purchased for this bathroom. I really only got a couple pictures and some greenery and a shower curtain. So all of these other things already came out of this room. I'm even using a paint sample that I already had to redo my vanity with. So I just want to be an encouragement to you that you really can make a huge impact on your space, spending very, very little money. Paint goes so far in making your space feel different and you can reuse things that were already in a room, the things that you really like. Even if you bought it two years ago, that doesn't mean you can't use it again. You can reuse and upcycle things you already have. You can buy things at thrift stores and on clearance and you can reuse paint that you already have and still end up with a beautifully made over room. Usually when I paint, I get all of the supplies that I need to do all of my cutting in while also rolling the walls. And I do this because I switch back and forth. I usually start with cutting everything in just to make rolling a little bit easier, but I don't like to pull the ladder out and cut the ceiling in until all the things that are on the bottom half of the walls are done. So I'll do all the cutting in on the lower parts of the walls and then do all of the rolling on the lower parts and then I'll start working on the upper parts with the ladder. So that's just the way that I go about it. I also, especially if I have a, a large room that I'm working on, I'll just get tired of doing cutting in and my hand will get crampy. So I'll just switch back and forth between cutting in with a brush and rolling the paint and eventually the room gets done and <laughs> that's just the way that I like to go about it. I know some of you probably cringed when you saw me start painting this wood wall white and I totally understand when we put this wall up I did love it the natural wood and we just put a sealer over it to protect it from the water that comes from the shower and the sink but it has been this way for four years now and I'm just finding that I need a change and I thought that this would be a really impactful way to make a big difference in this space. I'm going for a light and bright vintage farmhouse style for this bathroom, so the wood wall had to go. Good morning. It's about 8 a.m. and I am determined to finish the bathroom today. I left some cutting in on the top of the walls. I finished two coats on all the bottoms of all the walls, but I want to do everything that doesn't require a ladder first. So I'm going to paint the bottom trim and all the beadboard first and start painting the door. And then I will bring the ladder in and start cutting in on the ceiling. So I want to be, like I said, totally done with this bathroom makeover today. So I have some painting still to do and then put the hardware back on the cabinets and then decorate put everything back together. I'm really excited to see how it all turns out. So let's get back to work.
Before it got any later in the day, I wanted to get my shelves stained. These shelves were cut from a piece of remnant wood that we had in our garage. So I didn't spend anything on them, but I did have to sand them down because apparently I had done a painting project on them previously. I sanded them all down and got them ready for stain. And then my camera ended up dying before I got the stain on. But I used an oil-based Varathane stain. And this is the color Spring Oak, but I actually, to get the color that I got, mixed it with the color Jaco Bean. So I don't have an exact formula for how I got that stain color. Just continued to mix the two colors together until I got the desired color that I wanted. So I have this bench from Ikea. I do like it because it's a nice sturdy seat to sit on while I'm getting, giving my daughter a bath. But I don't necessarily love that there's this reservoir down here that collects all kinds of dust. I could have spent money that I didn't have to get myself a new stool for this bathroom, but I've decided that I really want to make this stool work because we've already spent money on it and I'm choosing to be wise with our budget for this makeover. So I figured that I would put a little bit of elbow grease into this bench to make it closer to what I would want if I could just go out and buy a new bench. I really just wanted to rough this bench up and make it look like it's older than it actually is. I took a hammer, I used both sides of that hammer, I used an, a large drill bit and a screwdriver, and I just whacked away at it until I felt like it was pretty well beat up. And then I took a 60 grit sandpaper and sanded down just the splintery edges. It's always good to wear eye protection when you're using a sander. I finally went and got a pair after I got pelted in the face a few times. So definitely wear eye protection when you sand and then you see me using the dirt trick. This is all over the internet. Tons of people use the dirt trick on all kinds of different things. It's used as an aging technique and I just wiped this mud mixture. I mixed this dirt with water and then just rubbed it all over every single nook and cranny of this stool. I wanted to make sure that everything was good and covered, that there was no like exposed um, nice parts still, and that I really worked the dirt into the crevices I made with the hammer. Now it's time to work on all of this trimming. So I just finished putting the last coat of paint on the trim and the doors and this wainscoting. I am so excited to be at this point because I couldn't have taken another minute of painting. <laughs> um, it is officially time to get this room cleaned out, get all the painting paraphernalia out of here and you know wipe down the surfaces and then it is officially time to put the final touches on this room, add everything back in and I am so excited, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Whenever I'm doing a painting project, no matter whether I cover the floors or not, I always end up having to clean paint up. <laughs> so I found these Miracle Wipes. There's another type of these that are the Goo Gone brand, but they're absolutely amazing. They clean up paint. I think that there are some sort of essential oils in them or something. They don't smell harsh at all. They smell like peppermint to me. Um, they are safe for your skin and they do such a good job of getting paint off of surfaces. So I find that if you're having like a problem area, kind of like that one, 
I wipe over it and then I go and work on another area while the solution works to soften the paint and then I go back over and I just do that until all the paint is gone. These wipes are so good and I'm so glad that I found them because I do use them every single time that I paint. So it's still the same day, but I couldn't handle being in my paint clothes any longer. So I did change into slightly less dingy clothes. And I am finally getting around to putting things back into the bathroom, getting the hardware back on and the mirror up and all of the foundational things so that we can decorate. That's always my favorite part of any video. And for once, I am actually working on a room in a way that I'm going to be able to decorate it just all in one fell swoop and I'm so excited because I've never been able to do that before. I'm going to be putting the hardware that I originally had on these cabinets back. I was considering putting gold hardware on the cabinets because gold I think looks really really good with green paint but all of my other finishes are matte black so I'm not against mixing metals at all but I do think that if you are going to mix metals that it should be very purposeful and because everything else in here is black I think I'm just going to stay with the black hardware but I do like how much more this black hardware stands off of this paint because it's a lighter green so I'm going to get this back on and then just kind of do a montage of me putting everything back into the bathroom. I could have put these shelves up myself. I did put the previous shelves up myself, but it is so much easier to do it with a second pair of hands. So I'm so thankful for my husband and I wanna give him a shout out for always being willing to help me when I have bright ideas and want to have help on a project. He's always willing to help and I appreciate and love him for that. So I do like using the tape trick where you lay a piece of tape over the back of your frame and mark the holes and then wherever you put it on the wall you know exactly where your holes need to be. But I find that when you 
do that with multiple frames, like specifically three in a row that you want to all have hanging at the same level. Um, I find that it's an imperfect science when you use tape because tape can like bend when it goes on the wall and not go on perfectly level. So when you put your nails in the wall or your screws, they don't all hang at the exact same level. So I decided to level up and use this this large metal ruler. Actually drywallers use it to cut large sheets of drywall, but it worked perfectly for this project. It was sturdy and level and I was able to hang all three pictures perfectly on the very first try. If you're ever having a hard time getting your florals to stand in the right position when you put them in a pot, I like to shove plastic bags down into the pot and it kind of acts as like a foam of sorts and it helps to hold your stems in place. The screen was all over this bathroom when we first moved in. Thank you guys so much for being here. It really means the world to me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope that you would consider subscribing. There is a lot more where this came from. 
Next week's video is a master bedroom makeover. I am so excited about this one. I've already started working on it. I'm so sorry that this video is so late. Uh, after listening to last week's audio, I really wanted to make sure that this video was not just uploaded on time, but it was quality. So I did take a couple extra days to get the quality right, and I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next week. I hope you have a blessed week, and I'll see you next time. Until then, bye. Thank you.